same scenario here where you have uh, another setup where they weren't able to get their scrims or didn't scrim at all. Yeah. So or let's let's rephrase not not scrimming proper teams, but maybe the way you are scrimming is not yeah. the proper way. Because if to you get that information. Exactly. If you don't try and scrim like you're playing on stage, well you won't get to learn all these small things when meta changes, when patches changes. And that's been a big problem for a lot of European teams is they waste time in scrims. It becomes a slug fest, it becomes a bit like the last game was here, just like kills everywhere and then someone FFs, you know, after like 20 minutes. It happens well. for too many European teams, it needs to be fixed. But uh, <laughs> hard, for, <laughs> hard for people to do. Indeed, indeed. Well, we're back into this game. Wait, Giants Echo's banned now? Love. Echo's banned for some reason. Why is okay, Echo so Cassidy and Karma, first two bans. I mean, Karma's used before, and then Cassidy up here again at night, but then Echo? Yeah, like, you don't just randomly pull out Echo being like, hang on, we forgot about this champion. Uh, we haven't know, played game it. three. But they now will be we gotta ban Echo. it. It's, it's the game three secret, it's the return of the king champion. Huh? Fortnite, the champion. He needs to win. He did actually play it in the quarterfinal. I like Echo Mid. I think he's, he's pretty good. But I'm uh, surprised it is a ban now. But I think if you are Unicorns right now, you kind of close your eyes a little bit and you kind of look <laughs> around <laughs> and you're like, ban this one. Oh, Echo. Hey, great. Played a game of darts uh, mid series and it was like, hey, land on Echo. All right, that's what we're banning in game three, guys. So I'm not banning Rek'Sai, uh, which is what they banned before. So now uh. Giants have to make. A decision nice here. Man. And that's actually why the it's Echo ban. Yeah, now it makes sense that you don't ban the Rek'Sai side because Move has been on Italy two games in a row. Uh, I didn't like his performance, especially not in game two in it. So I don't think Giant should ban it at all. But now Unicorns basically want to get the Rek'Sai as a trade. You know, if Giants go for the first pick Vladimir again, you get the Rek'Sai. If Giants go for the first pick Sive, you get the Rek'Sai. So Giants really have to decide because there's so many of these S tier picks now. And they do go with the Rek'Sai, so now Exile gets his Vladimir, and it's not often Exile gets to play one of the big three for him, Cassidy and Rise or Vladimir. You can just go something like Vladimir Shen here, Vladimir Sivir. I think Vladimir Shen makes a lot of sense. And then you have like a super, super strong core because Shen and Vlad, that is great synergy. That's best friends, man. Mm -hmm. A ghost mid laner who can just dive the back line with a Shen, on sitting top on of top of him and just kind of jumping down, surprising them because he's a ninja after all. Uh -huh. yep. That is... Good stuff. Really good first, first, uh, first rotation. For Giants have to take Sivir here, by the way. Otherwise, it's completely um, suicide. Yeah, but even getting the Vladimir here is so good for Unicorns of Love. Even coming out of game two, that's one of the things that went really well for Giants in that last game. I was just like, man, Vladimir just can't die. And then top lane was really fed as well. But you take away one of those components and I feel like maybe Giants will just go back to game one where they just kind of fell apart. It, a lot of it will also be down to Maxor, who's now playing this Rex site who I feel like kind of had to take it away from move, so it doesn't yeah. have the Elise uh, in this game to try and get those early kills. Overall, just a smart call from, from Sheepy and the Unicorns of Love, kind of being, hey, let's have a filler ban, so that's the echo, that's why we made fun of it, because yeah. you don't randomly just ban it when it hasn't even been played, so it's just a filler ban, mm -hmm. uh, is based around Max Law on Elise or Rek'Sai will have equal early game impact. So by you giving him the Rek'Sai, or potentially giving him the Rek'Sai, you cannot get Elise yourself for move, so he's going to get a better early game jungler in terms of ganking for himself, which is the style he normally likes to play and not the I have to counter jungle and, and like steal away farm from the enemy right. jungler because we have seen he's not really able to do that. So Unicorn's actually now able to get a more solid draft and also take away something like Vlad because worst case they would have gotten Rek'Sai Shen in the first rotation if Vlad had been first pick on the other side. Tam Kench Sivir was the rotation. Was expecting Sivir, but also the Tam Kench. I'll be going up to Hustlin, most likely. I love how uh, Hustlin likes to always change supports. He is the same in the quarterfinal. Four different supports in four different games. Mm. This series as well, he's been kind of moving around different uh, support picks. We have True. Trundle, game one. And Braum. And with Braum. Now we're going Tom Kench. They're all available, by the way. Just likes to change yeah. a lot. Uh, Tom Kench is normally not the greatest versus big AoE mages because, yeah, you save one guy, but then the other guy next to him dies. Uh, but I think Tam Kench is just overall a super solid pick. I, th I think you can pick him against anything, honestly, so he's good blind pick support as well. We get the Elise we talked about. Gragas was another option. Good, uh, fine matchup against Rek'Sai. Yeah. But he goes for Elise, uh, gets the early pressure for Move. Yeah, Move doesn't like the Gragas as much, uh, I feel, like versus the Elise and uh, Rek'Sai from what we've seen at least in the regular season and playoffs. Ooh, that is a Mauser Heart. What? That's a vein! You kidding? That is a vein! <laughs> okay. Uh, and they're not the team with the Eww. Tam Kench as well. Like, if they had the Vayne and the Tam Kench, they'd be like, yeah, okay, I can see it. Maybe uh, pick him up and carry him to safety. Is this Unicorns being like, all right, well, 
We have these two wins. We can lose yeah. two now, and now we can just pick up the vein. We have Alistair as well here. It is definitely Unicorn saying, hey, 2-0, guys, it's, it's looking good. Oh man, this is so weird because we came out of bands as well thinking, okay, Echo, uh, that's a bit weird. And then they picked a fantastic first rotation. It was like, all right, Unicorns, I see you. I see what you're doing. And then they pick Vayne. It's like, all right, I don't see you. <laughs> I, I mean, Max was, going on. Max was laughing as well. <laughs> Vayne, last pick coming in for Unicorns. Uh, it is a pick that's getting buffed or has gotten buffed on live, but this is 615, guys, so uh, it is not buffed yet. It's also a champion building things like Blade of the Rune King, which has been nerfed quite a lot, so other champions who try to do the same really suffered from it. Also, champion doesn't really offer a whole lot of wave clear at all. The reason I highlight it is because when you run like Vladimir Shen, they tend to take up the side lanes and your AD carries then sitting in mid, yeah. being like the stable wave clear. <laughs> well, you have a Vayne sitting there now, that doesn't do anything. So normally you put Vayne in the side lane, then Vladimir sits mid lane, so it kind of reduces his value, but Veritas can set up some pretty sick 1v1s and then cheat and obviously get a Shen ulti on him for 1v2. Okay. And he, he's going for style points here, Paul. Yeah. That's basically what he's aiming for. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see if the Vayne wins here. Jump on Twitter, use the hashtags for maybe the last time in this series as we are on match point. Vote that low esports, UOL win or GIA win. We're we seeing what you think when we get into this game here. Deficio. This could be the last one, but... Riot Pulsar. Riot Pulsar. Um, you know how often I get asked about that? I mean, like, uh, whenever you see Pulse, do you ever call him Pulsar? Like, <laughs> no, I actually don't, <laughs> because I don't normally walk around saying Pulsar. Yeah. But I say you can't right say that. You ruin your brand. People think you're all about That's the, true. The, the, the Pulsar. Ignore everything I said <laughs> for the last five Cut seconds. Cut the tape. <laughs> um, Let's redo it, redo it. So who do you think is, like, the world's best vein? Or who are, like, some standout veins? Like, Reckless, of course, was a big vein player back so, in the day. First of all, there is no world's best vein because no one plays vein. So there is <laughs> no right, world's right. best. When vein used to be picked a bunch. Because um, who is Veritas doing an impression of is what I'm getting at. Oh, I mean, you can... I mean, you can just look some of the great AD carries, give him an imp, give him an Uzi, maybe. Yeah. You know, some of these... I see that. Some of these old guys here. I wouldn't exactly put some of the European AD carries up there <laughs> uh, with those guys when it comes to the hard carry AD carry style back in the day. But Vayne for Veritas. Vel? 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 All right, Vladimir. Instead of Vel, uh, we have obviously an old counter pick against Sivir, which is the Vayne. Because mm -hmm. what you used to do is you would start auto attack trading, and when Sivir would boomerang to win the trade, you just tumbled out of it, and you would actually get the three hits from yours, and you could uh, win that easy trade. Uh -huh. Now you're just going to get pushed in uh, to your tower 24-7, <laughs> because uh, people have moved on and learned a lot about matchups. I just want to see where Veritas goes in the mid to late game. Is he the guy sitting inside them with the Shen ulti and Vladimir is holding mid? Because that's almost what you have to do as unicorns. I guess. Uh, great, not a great start here from a unicorn nope. spot. Uh, Veritas <laughs> taking a lot of damage. Ah, come on, Vayne, use your wave clear. Oh, never mind. Get in there. Oh, yeah, rip. Um, all right, I want to see some dank out players coming in from Veritas. Make I, the I Vayne mean, work. If you pick the Vayne to style on the enemy, then you better style on the enemy. Exactly. Like, otherwise, you look like a fool. We don't want to go Vayne spotting in this game. That's a lot of damage out from Exile on tonight, but he gets a decent punish. And the level two. I don't like the void links in this game. They're so weird. Little choppy Voidling moving around. Yeah, they look like they're made out of like wool or something. Yeah. Like uh, mochi or something. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I, yeah, I agree to Fisher. Venomous skin, pretty cool though. Um, and top lane, Surgeon Shen. I feel like TPA Shen is where it's at. Um, Nar skin, B tier, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of B tier skins in this game, and a vein. So, like, we're done here. <laughs> B tier. Let's, uh,. uh all right, all right. See the junglers heading towards each other. Oh, they were taking the rift guard like Not like shit in the move. night. They're going to be fighting. Move combo onto Maxwell, and he takes him down by 50%. And move is taking a lot for Maxwell. This is going to be very close. Repel comes up, jumps over the wall to blue buff, and we'll have to flash away. Maxwell lands the Prey Seeker, but not enough to uh, finish him off. Maxwell so close here, just not in range. Move is staying around. Problem is here for Unicorns is their bot lane can't really move away because they're going to get pushed into the tower. So always gotta respect it. Now Exile stopped the recall. Ghost has been popped. Maxwell following after. Again, Prey Seeker lands, but Exile too mobile with the Ghost being used, and he's good to go. So, three minutes in. Uh, who picked up the blue there? Who? No one. No one did. Still alive. Still alive, yeah. Sentinel gets to live another day. Maxwell was a little bit too low to take down the blue buff the first time of his life. The blue buff that is not Maxwell, where no one actually kills it. Whenever they started, so often we just see people abuse the pool, group up every time, and oh, nice trade! And then it's the combo away at the same time. 
Yeah, not not such a nice combo. I'm not really sure what that was aimed at because it was no wall for Sunstar to be pinned to. I guess he just no, no, wanted no. like it's... auto attack, auto attack, yeah, and yeah. knock him away, with condemn. Right? When your last auto attack flies in the air and you condemn away the other guy, he doesn't get to auto attack you back. Right. And you uh, you get a bit of actually also get a bit of extra damage from it. But here he actually shouldn't have done it. Should have kept him in place because of the knock up from Hillisan. No spell shield were used from Sunstar, and that could have been a very good trade. It was a good trade still. Obviously, then that's the thing for for unicorns. You win this bottom lane by trading, not by trying to like out push a severe. It's never gonna happen. Also, getting these solo kills when Tom Kench is around, or getting these two two kills is very difficult. All single target damage, and honestly, you just want to farm, get level six on Vayne, and then you can start all laning. Because Severe's ulti at level six doesn't add, offer anything in terms of combat stats. Vayne's, on the other hand, offer. I'm just gonna talk very slowly here while I totally don't check how much AD it actually gives her. Mm -hmm. It gives her 30 AD pulse, which I just remembered. Ah, yes. Uh, so that's a lot of extra AD from a level 6 compared to movement speed on the other side. Can confirm. You could have just been looking over as you were setting up the point. Either way, move gonna find Smitty J in the top lane, gets the jump, but lines himself up for the cocoon. Flash after by Chachi, and a flash over the wolf and Smitty J. Oh, he's not arranged for the repel. He gets out. Oh, Chachi. And move had no flash because he had to use it before when Maxlaw found him in the jungle. In the end. No one dies. Close calls, I feel, both from Smitty J and yeah. Move earlier in this game. But this is still fine for Unicorns. You get to sit and farm on Vladimir. You get to sit and farm on the Vayne. Get level 6 on this bottom lane. Then Shen ulti down to the bottom lane and do what you did in game 1. Just camp that bottom side with your global. Win the game. Move on. And face Fnatic tomorrow. Another challenge. Another challenger awaiting as well. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like uh, the old Pokemon gym when you had to... The Elite Four. Yeah, the Elite yeah. Four. Move an Exile, aggressing on Knight in the middle lane. And... Or jump away. Knight has level 6. Nice sidestep on the Cocoon. Maybe able to get in range here. But move will jump away to the minion. And he's away, safe and dry. Bot lane, Veritas. Lots of damage coming out. Gonna bump Sunstar away. Yeah, you definitely want to tumble to the side and not backwards and get hit by the Boomerang on the way out as well. Max Law is not setting up for dive. That would be a little bit too crazy. Well, to be fair, actually, he could actually flash in and just ulti from the Malzahar, and he could try and kill him. But he should still stay around because Exile is going aggressive. On to Knight. Knight does have his ultimate, remember. He's taking so much damage and nice sidestep the, oh, the Void. First Blood, very nicely executed. Yeah, great move around here from, uh, from Exile and uh, ulti coming in from Chachi. Perfect start for them. Malzahar is not the strongest laner anymore, so being able to shut him down early really does delay him. Malzahar is one of these champions where you need to hit three items to really have a massive impact. He doesn't beat Vladimir in the laning phase, but then later on in the game, he's very annoying for Vlad because Vladimir gets forced to go QSS, which kind of slows him down quite a bit. And even when he does use the QSS, well, he's uh, not able to have the same damage as before. This is Exile, honestly, all laning, knows he has the Shen ulti available. And it's very easy all in, honestly, for Unicorns to execute. Knight staying around, didn't even use the flash. Yeah. I mean, there's no point even ulting there, because you're not going to kill him. Uh, you've got Shen on top of him, so... Just going to be saving both of those uh, cooldowns for now. Uh, but Unicorns with that first blood. Second Vayne. First time for Veritas. Uh, who else played Vayne? Yo. That's a... Uh, I wish they kind of would add uh, that to the little drop I've down. I've been told by Spells it was uh, Raya, or however you pronounce it in Danish. Oh, Raya. Yeah, the shrimp. Danish shrimp. Danish shrimp. shrimp. I mean, that didn't even count. He was even. Yeah, was <laughs> and he lost yeah. it in that game as well. Yep. I actually do remember that game now. But here's a gang of mid pulse. Oh, that's the ultimate and the layering of the CC. But he still has pool, and he's probably out. He's gonna sidestep back oh, in. Oh, renewed it. The Q. Oh, minions. Nope. Out. Oh. Fooling is unable to finish him off. Close call. Got to uh, refresh the stack here on the Miles R E on to Vladimir. Now we're gonna hit level 6 in the bottom lane, Pulse. Veritas just hit level 6 now. Shen ulti is not available for about a minute and 20 seconds. Once it is ready, look for those all-ins and potential dives in the bottom lane. It's the time you really want to start trading. If you are Unicorns of Love. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Max Law, Pulse, he's hiding in the bush. There's the combo. Lands the E, but there's Maxo over the wall, and Ver uh, Chachi is overcommitted. Smitty J will jump after him, and it's again just a very easy kill in the top lane. Yeah, you know what I like, Pulse? I like when one top lane has placed a pink ward in the river, mm -hmm. so the enemy top lane has zero vision. And the enemy top lane, top lane even knows there's a pink ward there, so he yep. knows, okay, I have no vision. 
And then the enemy top lane, top lane anyway just decides like, I'm just gonna randomly taunt forward. I have no idea where enemy jungler is, but I'm just gonna taunt forward. Oh, he's here, I'm dead. Like, come on, you don't even have a ward in the river. I know that your jungler was on the way, but that's way too early to go aggressive then. Yep. Sloppy, sloppy death here from Chachi. Really sloppy. It's very difficult to get hyped over someone just pushing up too far. I mean, uh, not even pushing, just... he even taunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, aggressive This is my one the escape tower. tool. Yep. Sunstar uh, has this problem. Uh, people really like Alistar against Sivir. Mm -hmm. Because when you combo forward as, as Alistar and just WQ... You can't bump both. Yeah, you Siv both Sivir cannot spell shield it. They can even just flash Q her and just like kill her. They're doing it! Just like that! Good timing to fish here. Sunstar knocked into the tower. Hiller sign with the ignite will get the kill. And the TP from Chachi. Huston trying to waddle away to victory, but he's not gonna get away. Hiller sign, oh, flash over the wall. And Hiller sign does not want to get caught by that, so he is gonna get out alive. I was wrong. That's what we talked about with the Shen ulti, just coming down to the bottom lane. Look for these fights. Yep. The problem again for Sivir is if you try and spell shield the full combo of Alistar, then you often just end up blocking the W and you still get hit by Q. Oh. Exile. Mid lane, Exile, ah, he's walking out of yeah, it. Yeah, he's fine. Flash after, Tides of Blood, Sanguine, poor. Q. He'll carry on after, but will he actually get out? He's gonna walk away. Oops, last tower shot did not land. Exile makes it out alive. Another 1v1 kill to add to the back there to Fischio. Oh, 27 now. Yep. For Legolas in the mid lane, and Gimli Tally it right up. now is behind. He's minus one. He's actually get a negative, yeah, because he taunted it forward. That was yep. stupid. Anyway. This is what we talk about with the bottom lane with the vein against the Sivir. Giant's That's trying to go in. in. He lands a knockup onto Hillersign, but just have the ultimate. Chachi's gonna dive in. He may pay for this one with his life, and I think he indeed will. Oh, Huston, he needs to get in range. Flash away. I am so wrong in these trades. I'm like, ah, he's dead to rights, and then they still have Flash, <laughs> and they just get out. It's like, all right, okay. You hype it up, man. Yep. You, you predict it. What people, I'm here for. People are sitting ready for someone to die because you tell them someone is going to die. Yeah, they're like looking at something on their second monitor. So they look over and it's like, oh. And oh. Once you got hyped just for one second, you can't take it back, yep. which means we win. You got hyped for a moment. You were interested. You thought someone was going to die, but they didn't. So no jokes on you. Unicorns of Love did not land a cocoon. This is a game where many skill shots are not landing, Deficio. That's something I've realized. It's because they're expecting the other guy to juke that way. But because the other guy is cocky, he doesn't move that way, right. and therefore they miss it. It's always a classic. It's one I hear from Prepo all the time, depending on which division he's in, because he obviously flies from like Challenger to Diamond 1 and up and down. Yeah. And it always changes. Being like, ah, oh, Challenger, I can't hit them because they move the wrong way, and then in Diamond, I can't hit them because they don't move at all, and I try, I think they move, and, uh -huh. you know, I'm starting to write them down. I have like three pages full now. <laughs> right. The analysis of Crapo. Whoop. Move. He's getting chased down. Nice double knockup in from Max Thor. Slamming into the wall as well from Smitty. Sonstar trading off with Veritas underneath the tower. Will be saved out by Hustlin. But he will be <laughs> dropping. Span him to relative safety. No, he's not safe at all. Veritas double kill. That no minions. See you later, nerd. That no minions when they dove in. So when Sunstar and Hustlin walked towards the rest of Giants, they actually took tower aggro instantly. Oh, hey, Cal, what's going on? Time. Smitty J, 1v1, takes down the spider. All right, Smitty J, this is your time. Ah, never mind. Fun the cow, gets the kill. Mess with the horn. No, mess with the bull, you get the horn. That's the one. Whatever, same thing. Exile, <laughs> now he also wants to go aggressive because this game is just constant aggression. Exile Knight, there we go, trading ultimates once again. Somehow I feel like Vladimir will come out ahead somehow. Exile chasing him down, there's the Q, getting a lot of health back. Chachi as well, the ultimate, keeping him alive. Actually save was the needed there, saving the day. Good save the day, yeah. Good, good for Chachi. And uh, Rups also exile off a solo kill. Smart play by Chachi. He's, ah. he's chasing him. He wants to win the race for most solo kills in the EULCS. Right now, exile is number one. Chachi is number two. True. Ulting him by getting an assist means no solo kill. Okay, break so, this. Hustlin is tanking the tower me. right now because there's no minions. And then Sunstar walks in and takes, obviously, the entire combo from Hillersang, so these two guys are not able to join Max Von Smitty J in their attempt to dive between towers. And then here and we then have the, the, the legendary 1v1. Yeah, this is a uh, good one. So it's actually Smitty J, isn't it? Because Max Von Max like, he, he 1v1s the cow, and Smitty J 1v1s move. Ooh, and then Hillersang is back. Bam. It's like, Veritas, you want this kill? <laughs> you think you're the carry? Look <laughs> at me. I'm the carry now. Oh, here's a TP again. Yes, sir. It wouldn't be a Unicorns of Love game without constant fighting. He doesn't have Flash, but they do have a low health tower. And Veritas, lots of damage onto Huston. But going to Grey Health, and Sunstar, we playing with a lot of damage himself. And after all of that, no kill onto Huston. Oh, well, Sunstar did have his spell shield ready, so they respected it. And actually went for the Tam Kench instead. Mm. 
Hard to kill him though, early on, with the... Uh, Tam Hench. The Tam Hench. I actually wish we called him Tam Hench. Mm -hmm. Top but lane. High ends. First Blood Tower, <laughs> two Giants. Whoa. That's something they can write home about. That is. And Tower... Put that on a piece traded. of paper, hang it on your wall. <laughs> Got the first Tower, Game 3 against Unicorns Got in the Gauntlet. The tower. 2016 EU Seven Qualifier. <laughs> The enemy Vayne and enemy Vladimir had three kills and two kills, but we got first tower, boys. Hey, at least Veritas is actually positive in this game. No Vayne spotting thus far. And, oh, uh, solid. Yeah. So he is getting the styling game that he wanted. But again, Unicorns very clearly wants to play around that bottom lane with these globals from Chachi coming down and, and helping them in his one v ones And again, we got to see this Alistair into Sivir because Hillsheim combos forward. Sunstar tries to spell shield. All spell shield is the W of Alistar, but it doesn't matter because Alistar is already at you, so he's just going to Q you up and knock you off. So that's why Sivir can't spell shield that Alistar combo. And that is a problem because then you're going to get jumped 24-7 and you get to see the 1-3-1 one, one set up with the Vayne in the bottom lane from uh, Unicorn's section. I'm not even going Blade. Going like that item. Suck. That's the, uh, that's the uh, split push build. That's the Don't one one. Split push. Yeah. Phantom Dancer for split push. Oh, he's gonna get tech on the All right. floor. His montage time, can he do it? Flash out of the way, doesn't get CC just yet. Oh, Kite away for Maxwell, turn it around. Is that Uzi in the house? Veritas chasing down Hudson and Sunstar. They all have to back away. Veritas yes, was just cow. too good. Mata's coming. Over the wall, the knockup will be spell shielded by Sunstar. Hillasang locks him down, he'll pick up the there kill. Tramples him to death, right. waddles away, what a kill. Trust me guys, doing worlds, we're gonna see exactly this play as well from RNG with Uzi and Mata. Leading the charge and Smitty J. Smitty J thinks he's someday, but someday he won't be him at all. Goodbye, someday Veritas with the kill. 3 0 2. Yeah, unfortunately, rip a You could have picked any other top. I know, could have. Ah, missed opportunity. Either way, two kills to Unicorns. <laughs> and uh, Exile has been trying to uh, 1v1 night about 500 times in this game. He's gonna look for just some poke. <laughs> next time, next time it will be better. Oh, here's Illithang. Oh, that's unfortunate. He's out. He's good. Don't worry, guys. Worth it. Trade, you got the flash. We had a 10 second cooldown for flash. Oh! There's the flash and there's the kill. Move. Probably didn't even need him right there. <laughs> Exile picks up that kill. Fourth one of the game for him. 10 2 on the unicorns. And we're back to game one. Um, we've had a lot of fun this game, Deficio, but I think a lot of it, I feel, goes down to the champion stack. We had uh, a pretty smart pixel bounce up until the vein pick from Unicorns of Love, and it would force Giants into a very similar situation as game one. Uh, and lo and behold, we have a very similar game. Yeah, uh, one thing we have learned here on 6.15 uh, in the European playoffs is that first pick on Rek'Sai, when every other jungler, like Lee's and Gragas are still available, mm -hmm. are actually not worth it. Uh, no one is, has been able to use it effectively enough to make it worth it. Anyway, let's see uh, the Uzi play in the bottom lane here from Unicorns of Love. It's a dive from Giants. But they don't even know who they're messing with. Despite two pink wards, it's just not enough. Hiding around from Veritas, move joins in. Rest of Unicorns join in as well once Chachi was actually in position to ult it down. And then the cow shows up. Bam. So while that was happening, we you couldn't saw show it the kills, by the way. We do not show kills on our stream. In the bottom. Yeah, I got sense of that stuff. Uh, in the bottom side of your screen, you saw uh, Chachi was chased down by Smitty. Again, we didn't show off. the kill. Mm -hmm. Again, we are making sure every age group can walk. To be fair, you cannot blame observers on that one. When action happens every <laughs> right, 20 I'm not blaming seconds, um, I'm just people in Twitch chat will be like T-Tours, and it's like, look, guys, you can't catch everything in this game. They're fighting literally every 20 seconds. Yeah, I actually feel like every time we come out of a play, uh, a replay, someone is either dying or <laughs> dead already. Yes. That's kind of been the rule of this game specifically. Right, like, let's, let's go to replay and see if we can get a fight. Like, just go like random replay of someone farming, and once we get out, I guarantee you, Three someone, people will be dead. someone is either dead or about to die. It's either dead or about to die. Here we go. Oh, no. no. Night gain chased down. Torn. Tides of blood. Cool for Exile. Not a solo kill, though. Again, Chachi denying the solo kills from Exile to try and keep it even. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think he needs a gen there, to be honest, but did break a stat. Top lane, Spinny J is all by himself because Chachi decides to go down. Uh, a move in Veritas and chasing down Max Law. Didn't get the third proc of the silver bots there, Trying unfortunately. Trying to get him into the small wall as well. Yeah. Uh, 
Light on the itch. That's another tower post, 19 minutes in. And uh, so far, Vladimir has proven pretty successful. Yeah. And also the bot lane strategy for the unicorns of love has worked. It does help when Uzi is your AD carry on Vayne. That's true. Veritas has been stepping up this game for sure. I mean, in the early lane, um, wasn't going so great, but after picking up those kills and skirmishes, was pretty good. Ah, this was uh, Chachi. Let's guess. Uh, he gets ran down the lane by an R. Oh, what's this? No, good and long lane. Oh. Whoops. We didn't see that. All right, let's keep going. Oh, Pro Seeker. Okay. Oh, Ooh. Maxilor. 360 no scope. What a beast. That's why he first picks Rexa. Yeah, he's not Hustling Beast though. He's Maxilor Beast. Maxilor Beast. Just he for that Pro Seeker. Well, 11-3. Again, we say goodbye Ooh, to our good friend, Rift Herald. Uh, he'll be going back to the Void, uh, carrying on his daily errands. And Maxor will... What's he doing? He's warding over the wall? He's definitely warding over the wall, and he wants that cool little animation of Baron spawning with yes. the red low, because... He's looking out for the viewers. Yeah, you get him with their little... Uh, oh, oh fighting, mid lane. Ah, yes. Uh, Sunstar. Ah, Hassan's going to eat yeah. him up now. Jokes on Veritas. If yeah. he had picked death by a touch, he could have killed Sunstar. Did he go for Perva? But... I mean, I don't think anyone would ever do that, but I'm just saying, if you had it right there, you could have killed him. Ah. So, uh, true. jokes on you, Veritas. Maybe next time, take it a few stone. Yep, made the mistake. Exile, he's being chased down towards the void. Ooh. Oh, oh right. yeah, Humor Plague. Here comes Hustle and Beast and Maxlaw, but he took them away from mid lane, so Unicorns of Love are just gonna ah. take the tower. Right. That's unfortunate. To be fair, he didn't ask anyone to click on him. Like, he was just going alone. That's true. It's not That's his true. fault that the rest of the team 100 was 100% right. Like, you gotta take ownership, Pulse. There you go. My face when Unicorns of Love in <laughs> 3 with Vayne. With Infinity Edge PV Vayne. This build hurts in a 1v1. And I'm sure Veritas will get a 1v1. Oh, yeah. In this game. Just who will Giant send down to try and challenge the mighty Vayne? So two Cloud Dragons in this game. Next one will also be a Cloud Dragon. Mm. So got those rotations coming in this game to Fischio. Definitely. You know, it was so fun to focus on Dragons before yeah. this patch happened, this 6.15. Now you just almost never focus on them because it's so much about the laning phase and getting all the towers and getting the gold advantage and not really Dragon advantage anymore. The ebb and flow of yeah. uh, the priority on Dragons. Sadly, it they were so fancy and looked so cool in the start, but now we've gotten used to them. They're no longer the cool kids around. It is the towers and the lanes instead. We need, uh, we need something else. We need party hats or something on the track. We very often see uh, this build from now where you go Black Fever and Frozen Mallet. I remember a year ago, uh, Wicked used to build this uh, with Runan's Hurricane. Right. Uh, and on Challenger, we were just like, I don't understand it. And then he was 66% right. So now, a year on, People are mostly building his build. But the idea behind Runans is I, you I don't instantly... don't want to call it his build. He <laughs> had it in a hurricane and no one else ever had it in a hurricane. Yeah. It will be if the end of the hurricane. But uh, it, it stacks up super fast because you build rage three times as fast. So uh, yeah. instantly. Sure. Yeah. I like it. You can also build a death cap because you get some magic damage. Does he have any ratios? I believe he's Hyper, maybe. maybe? Magic. Yeah. Here comes the engage mid lane. Moon being pinned down. Knight with the ultimate. Hillasang 1v4. He's got the help of Veritas. And Chachi coming in as well. He's just taking no damage. Ready to be eaten up by Tam Kench. Max Lord jumps away. Nice taunt onto Sunstar. But Chachi will not die. Chases down Knight for the first kill. And the ninja is after the queen of the Xersai. Will he get oh. her? No, he won't. He'll Chachi. come in for the double. Can he make it the triple? Oh, baby. He'll find it onto Sunstar. What a triple kill from Chachi here. Took his sweet time, but he did get the kills in the end. Also interrupted the Tom Kench old team, and Chachi got everything here. That was a montage move. Yes, it was. Montage everything material. Just slow that down, put in some techno, and you got... Some air horns. You got a YouTube clip right there. Good stuff, Unicorns. All right, four kills. What are you going to do with it? Looks like you're heading to Baron. His move is coming over there as well. All right, Maxwell. Maxwell, it's your time your to shine. Time to shine. Do it for all This of will England go down fans. in history if he gets this Come steal. on. Do this for your country. Do it for him. Do it for Pulse, honestly. Do it for me. Do it for all the British castles we have. Ah, he's so slow. You are a failure, Maxwell. You are like every other. 
Didn't even try. I mean, to be fair, there was no tunnel anywhere near and he couldn't have reached it, but still your fault. I was going to say, you're like every other bridge person, a massive point, <laughs> I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to say that. And the fact I did say it doesn't count because I say I wouldn't say it officially. That's true. So Just analyze this replay to fish here. We have an out. Analyze what? Here's Veritas hitting everyone and then wait for Chachi. Now, Chachi joins. Look at only the Shen. Taunts in, gets Sunstar. He's in the back line, one with three of these guys. One guy goes down to the Sunfire Cave. The next guy, he's backing out. He's afraid of fighting. And damn, look at him. Dropped. Disclaimer, I really like British people. Uh -huh. Especially you, Paul. Oh, thanks to this, yeah. Like you more than every other person. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Yeah. So, write that down, put it on your wall. <laughs> Will do. Remember it forever. Just write it as a quote or something of me. That's true. This comes up as a thought as well, I say. You can't never get away from that statement. Exile, he's in this 1v2. Max Law is chasing down. Archie, the odds are on. Exile, honestly, in this 1v2, he'll take down the first kill. Oh, Chachi's kill. here. There's the solo kill. He just needs to tag him. There's the kill still. Chachi in this 2v2. That's what I'm going to call it. Knight and Sunstar uh, in this. What is essentially a 2v5? Sunstar will surely be burned down. Hustlin comes up and swallows his ADC. Shut down onto Exile. Chachi finishes off the first kill. And Sunstar has to run away from him. But this was 2v5. Two people from the Unicorns. And that means the rest of the team is just finishing the game. Yes, they are, Pulse. And uh, Chachi's not done yet. He wants more kills down the bottom lane. Oh, he's been eaten up. Chachi is still in this one on two. Odds are on the Shen in this one. Sunstar backing away. Hustlin trying to pin him down. Needs to wait for the Devourer again. Oh, we'll oh, have Chachi. to flash away from the Shen. And now he's farming minions. But unfortunately, they're losing their Nexus. Unicorns of Love style all over Giants. Take the game and advance in the gauntlet. Whoever predicted 3-1 on the analyst desk would be ashamed of himself. Terrible analyst. I believe it was the Welshman who did it. Fantastic play uh, in that in that last game. Uh, picks and bounds were smart. Then he picked Vayne, and Vayne didn't die. That bot lane. The old school counter pick. Double. It has returned. Flawless KDA. Uh, yeah, actually we only had uh, everyone else but the bottom lane in this game. Not a lot. Uh, Knight had a 0-7 performance on the last half, and uh, I'm expecting a lot of angry tweets my way from rich people. But I didn't have to mean it. I do like you guys. Yeah. But. Um, Unicorns of Love, <laughs> miles ahead of Giants. Mm -hmm. Miles ahead. Miles, miles, miles ahead. What happened in game two, though? Well, game two was where Unicorns get showed once again some of the issues when they get challenged in the early game. Yeah. Especially when they get challenged in the jungle position in the early game. And Maxwell was able to pick up a lot of kills and actually did his job. You know, rest of the team got fed, but then when it came to late game team fights, they would just mess them up. They would overdive or like, I remember one of the fights where some time Lucian gets like stunned by Terry. I'm like, you're Lucian, you can dash out of it. Like these kind of things, or they miss barrels from GP. Whatever, 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 like individual mistakes in these fights. Uh, that was enough for Unicorns to then bounce back. Yeah. So they're obviously gonna have to go back and like, look at how is it you avoid falling behind early. And I think they solved it, solved it in game three by not trying to go for something like Nidalee. It was obviously banned by Giants for some reason yeah. in this game here, but instead be okay with trading like Rek'Sai for Elise, Get move on a on a champion where you can gank in mm -hmm. the early game, and then just get more of the traditional picks like yeah. Yadimir for Exile. Like Exile should never be allowed to get Kassadin, Rise or Vladimir. Those mm -hmm. are his three main picks where he's yeah. really become like a super strong mid lane on those specific picks. Whenever he's playing something else, he's looking weaker. Mm -hmm. Obviously, his karma performance today was good, but like those are the three main picks for him. Uh, obviously, Giants gave it over. They traded the Rex I for it. A trade I never think is worth it, at least in Europe, uh, because you get at least anyway for move, and he's yeah. going to have the same early game impact. So, definitely not worth it for Giants in this last pick and ban phase. But honestly, after losing game two, it looked like they were saying, yeah, hey, we just have to try something now. Yeah, and pretty much. Uh, so now I guess like the conversation is, how will Unicorns do against Fnatic? Because we haven't seen them in such a long time now. And that's why it's almost impossible to talk about it because Fnatic, you know, have been practicing. But we don't know if Fnatic have solved all their problems yeah. at all. So they might face a Unicorns team who's just right now, you know, 
performing on stage mm -hmm. well enough. They've had a lot of practice. Yeah, well enough to even beat Fnatic and actually then take on Splice. But the problem is, no matter which team advances to play Splice, unless Unicorns or Fnatic tomorrow play like really, really, really well, up, yeah. then none of them should actually have a chance versus Splice, who is a very good team. Well, that's it from us here on the Caster Desk. For more on that series, Paratechnics is standing on stage with the Unicorns man in the mid lane.